Hello, I'm James Morrow, and welcome to Busting the Narrative. Well, that's it. It's done. Over. Finished. Afghanistan is lost. The Taliban is in control. Billions of dollars in American armaments are in the hands of 7th century savages, and Xi Jinping is laughing in his baiju. Now, if you're a normal person, you're probably watching all of this and saying, heck of a job, Mr. President. But if you're one of the American media who helped drag Joe Biden over the line last year and might now somewhere be feeling a tinge of regret, you're probably out there saying, heck of a job, Mr. President. Because what we are seeing play out now in real time is a classic case of the mainstream media never having to say they're sorry. And why would they? They are too busy coming up with excuses for this catastrophe. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering just how will they spin their way out of this one? Or, to be more precise, on whom can they pin the blame? Well, my friends, the person to blame for all this is you. Yes, that's right. If you ever questioned the wisdom of the West's 20-year engagement in Afghanistan, even while honoring the service of our armed forces who went there, the new narrative is that, yes, you, you are to blame. Take one example. Here's Tom Nichols writing in The Atlantic, a once respectable magazine now turned into a reliable organ for elite liberal consensus politics. Afghanistan is your fault, Nichols said. The American public, he added with a sneer, now has what it wanted. And get a load of these, these words here. Quote, Americans will now exercise their usual partisan outrage for a few weeks, and then Afghanistan, like everything else in the nation with an attention span not much longer than a fast food commercial, will be forgotten. Can't you just feel the love there for his fellow Americans? And speaking of love, Joe Biden, who once said this, Ahead to an America that never leaves anyone behind. Ahead of an America that never gives up, never gives in. Is now being berated by the heartbroken parents of U.S. service personnel who died in a suicide bombing last week when he instructed the U.S. military to give up in Afghanistan. The mother of slain Marine, Riley McCollum, called Biden a, quote, feckless, dementia-ridden piece of crap who doesn't even know he's in the White House, unquote. Can't say fairer than that. Of course, not surprisingly, none of this made CNN's coverage of McCollum's death, of course. Well, rather, CNN stuck to the narrative, lauding McCollum's service and sacrifice, while ignoring the invective and vitriol a family in pain were directing at a seemingly insensitive president who even checked his watch while he was waiting for coffins to be unloaded at Dover Air Force Base. To be fair, the media isn't letting itself entirely off the hook. It is accepting some of the blame, not, let's be clear, for getting it wrong about Joe Biden, but rather its priorities. You see, the media they're now saying shouldn't be focusing so much on Afghanistan. No, 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 no. They should be spending more time on climate change. Have a look at this discussion on CNN between Brian Stelter and former Jimmy Carter advisor. <laughs> There's a blast from the past, James Fallows. Major events happening this uh, month, um, the COVID crisis among the unvaccinated in, the, in America. Uh, climate change, I mean, my God, this hurricane is a monster. Uh, how, what do you say about proportionality and about how much Afghanistan should be the front page story versus COVID or climate change or other stories? So I think that a challenge for us in the media is to try to keep multiple things in view. The hardest thing about being president, I say having worked in the White House decades ago for Jimmy Carter, is that a president is having to deal with emergencies on all fronts all the time. And I think for those of us in the media and the citizenry right now, it's kind of a sample of what governments need to do, of thinking about climate change day by day, of thinking about Afghanistan, thinking about COVID, which is still an emergency. Last week, we talked about the almost abusive relationship between Joe Biden and the press, where the press did everything they could to make him president, only to have walk away Joe never show them any love in return. For these people, Joe Biden's only problem is that, well, like an eager beaver job interview candidate, he just works too hard. It's a theme former Bill Clinton staffer David Rothkopf took up a few days later again in The Atlantic. Joe Biden doesn't own the mayhem on the ground right now, he wrote. If anything, Americans should feel proud of what the U.S. government and military have accomplished in these past two weeks. President Biden deserves credit, not blame. You hear that? Joe Biden is the hero of all this. And if you're an American or an Australian or an Afghan horrified by what's happened these past two weeks, well, 
You're just too dumb to know how good you've got it. I'm James Morrow. Email me at bustingthenarrative at skynews.com.au, and I'll see you next week.